Hey cats, hello again. One of our commenters convinced me that before I started working on any amps, I better do some safety things. So if you check the channel, you'll see that episode 2A and B are up. And there are short videos to describe how I built a couple of the safety items that I use all the time. Right now, I would like to just briefly go through how to work on amps safely. Now, I'm not responsible for your safety, obviously. And occasionally you might see me do stupid things and feel free to call me out. I'm cool with that. But in general, there are several things that I did from the beginning. I've been working on high voltage equipment without exaggeration since I was about 10 years old. My grandpa was an electrician and a physics dude and got me my first electronics kit when I was little. And everybody gave me their old TVs and radios to work on. And I've received very few electrical shocks, thank goodness, and thank good practices. First of all, your environment that you work in. I chose to use this wooden workbench uh, with no metal connections anywhere. I got it from one of the Chinese import stores when it was on super sale uh, several years ago. And it's all wooden, so obviously, I'm insulated from any type of uh, connection to ground through the workbench. I should point out there are two types of shocks we're worried about here. One is a shock from the supply voltage from the house, the 120, uh, to any point of ground. That would be a standard electrical shock you could get from anything when you're working uh, with power on inside a chassis. So that's from the power supply to ground. Now the workbench certainly helps that from happening in that I'm not working around any metal. The second thing that you can see is I'm working on rubber mats on the floor. I've got a rubber mat which will keep me from being grounded through the concrete floor down here in the basement. The outlets are all plugged in to a GFCI breaker. So because we're below grade, that's the code. If a GFCI senses an imbalance of current between the hot and the neutral, it will open. So that helps prevent any shocks uh, from that perspective. The next thing is, as far as environment goes, is that all of my power supplies that I use are fully grounded. And some of the old amps I work on, of course, are not grounded. Uh, they don't have a grounding, a green wire. Unfortunately, in those amps, they usually have a capacitor with a switchable ground, a double uh, uh, throw single pole switch that will hook one or the other legs of the 120 uh, through a capacitor to the chassis. Now there's a real possibility of getting a buzz through that kind of an amp. If you're my age and you played music at one time, I'm sure you've had your lips zapped many times on microphones back in the good old days. and the early 70s uh, and a little bit before, before we had grounded equipment. When I do one in front of y'all, I'll show you what I do to prevent getting any shocks from that. But I will say that several years ago, that's where these rubber floor mats came from. I was working on a buddy's old amp and was on the concrete floor and got a bit of a zap. And he actually went to a, a local warehouse club and brought me, bought me my first set of uh, rubber mats for the floor. So environmentally, Make sure you've got a safe work area. You want to make sure there's rubber floor mats, that everything's grounded, that you're using a GFCI. A wooden workbench is a great idea. The second type of shock that we have to worry about is not directly from the line, but from the high voltage DC power supply inside the device. It's an isolated power supply because a power transformer separates the voltage from being directly connected to the line. However, indirectly through the grounded chassis, it still is kind of connected to the ground. So the same precautions we use for line voltage also apply to the high voltage with some additional issues. The first thing is, is that it's DC and it can be very high voltage up to 750 volts in some amps. So some of the precautions we follow, this has already been done to this amp. First thing is, if it's disconnected and off, we drain the capacitors because unlike line voltage, DC can be stored in the filter capacitors. We'll cover that in more detail later, but that little tool I built is for that. 
Um, the other thing is, is that when I actually work on the amp, um, we, uh, if I'm working on it hot, I keep one hand on the wood, usually inside the drawer like this, and do my probing with the other. Or at least I keep my hand on my meter so I can move it, which still is made of plastic, so I'm separated from the chassis. I think it's obvious why. It's not a good idea to have 600 volts pass through your hand. It's a really bad idea to have it pass from one arm to the other through your heart. The next thing I want to talk about are certain safety tools we need to have. I showed you the current limiter that I always use when I first plug in amps, or if I'm working on them hot. That way, if there's a direct short, it'll prevent a lot of arcing and damage. It'll just make the light bulb light up. Although it still startles me pretty badly when I do something like that. The next thing, we talked about building this little capacitor drain lead. Um, you should generally be wearing some kind of glasses when you're working. I'll have them on um, all the time when I'm working on a live chassis where we could have any kind of arcing, okay? Um, one other little tool device is that you're going to want to use tools that are, are insulated and it's a good idea on tools you use in a hot app, like I used this to set bias, to throw a little bit of heat shrink or wrap some tape around the blades. It'll greatly reduce the chance of you contacting something you don't mean to. The same goes with meter leads. If you're using them uh, inside a chassis for high voltage, it's a good idea to heat shrink all but the very tip of the meter lead. That kind of covers it for right now for tools. Insulated handles and insulated blades where you're inside of things. Now techniques. One of the most important techniques, and this is what I got called out on by a commenter and they were right. When I was doing my very first test video, I grabbed a chassis out of a Music Man amp and did not explain that I had already drained the capacitors. Well, that amp had actually been sitting in pieces for months, so I didn't feel compelled to check anything for voltage in there. Capacitors don't hold their charge for that long. I mean, I suppose they could in some cases, but certainly not in guitar amps. When I'm working on an amp hot, I only work with one hand. It's one thing to get a shock from your little finger to your thumb. It's very uncomfortable. But any type of shock when you pass current through from one arm to the other or from your arm down to your legs, it can go through your heart. And our hearts run on electricity. That's what makes them beat. And if you happen to get an electricity going through your heart that's stronger than the pacemaker that's naturally built in, and of course, you know, you can be electrocuted and die. This is all about Ohm's law. And if you want to learn more, look at how many microamps it takes through your body to start causing different reactions to happen. I'm not going to cover that here. If you get no reading at all on your meter when you hook it up at first to the high voltage of an amp, uh, you may want to double check the meter in another uh, another area to make sure your meter is working. All of the stuff is available online in electrical safety. This is pretty much all I'm going to cover for now. And hopefully I'll always use safe practices when I'm setting an example. Thanks for watching. Next video, I promise we're actually going to work on an amplifier. See you soon.